The following is a public hall lecture given by His Grace Sriman Sankarshan Dasadhikari, recorded on August 26, 2012, in Burgas, Bulgaria. Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jatha Padakamalan Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shchan Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadaitam Savadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to our program. <clears throat> we want to celebrate the actual purpose of our human life. Human life is not meant for suffering. The only reason we suffer is we falsely identify ourselves with these material bodies. The material body and the self are not one and the same. Just as today you're wearing a white shirt, tomorrow you may wear a yellow shirt. Does that make you Mr. White Shirt or Mr. Yellow Shirt? No, you have nothing to do with your shirt. It's just something that you're wearing over yourself. <clears throat> so we learn from the ancient Vedic wisdom called Bhagavad Gita that the body is just like a garment. The actual self is situated within. And this is actually great news. Because the self within never gets sick. It never gets old. And it never dies. The self never dies. This body is subject to birth, death, old age and disease. But the self is not subject to these things. Therefore, if we can realize the importance of understanding our true identity, this is called transcendental knowledge. Because when you can actually realize your identity beyond your material body, and situate yourself in that transcendental identity by spiritual practices, <clears throat> then you become fearless. <clears throat> You're not afraid of death. You're not afraid of old age. You're not afraid of disease. <clears throat> You're not afraid of enemies. Because nobody can kill the eternal soul. The eternal soul is bulletproof. Fireproof. It can't be drowned. As long as you identify with the material body, you must fear death. Because the material body is subject to death, it cannot avo you cannot avoid them. But when you situate yourself in your spiritual identity by chanting the holy names of God, then you become fearless. You become re-situated in your natural, all-blissful, all-knowing, all-knowledgeable, all-loving state. 
и се становявате в вашето изначално състояние, което има вечно знание, блажение. That state of consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. И това състояние на съзнание се нарича Кришна съзнание. And that is the rarest gem. Това е най-рядката спокоценност. Кришна consciousness is the greatest treasure. Кришна съзнание е най-голямото богатство. It's the greatest blessing. Най-голямата благословия. There's nothing more valuable than Krishna consciousness. You can be very powerful. You can be very wealthy. You can be very famous. You can be very, very beautiful. But these things are nothing compared to Krishna consciousness. So if somehow you can develop this state called Krishna consciousness, which means pure love for God, then you become the most successful person. So we have our movement, the Krishna consciousness movement. Our founder Acharya, his grand grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Tehidandi Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada. He came to, from India in 1965 to the U.S. with only 40 rupees and some trunks of books. He was a 70-year-old man. He had suffered two heart attacks on the boat coming over. So what can an old man do to change the world? <clears throat> But actually this apparent old man was the greatest spiritual master in the history of the universe. <clears throat> By the purity of his desire to bless the world with Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> One miracle after another miracle after another miracle happened. And this huge international movement came forth from that one old man's preaching. So that means he's not really an old man. <laughs> he just had an old man's body. He's a, Prabhupada is a great empowered spiritual master. It is, it is stated in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Pravartana. Unless one has Krishna Shakti, the divine potency of Krishna, he cannot spread this Krishna conscious movement all over the world. <clears throat> so, because Prabhupada had this Krishna Shakti, he was able to spread this movement all over the world. Some of his god brothers are very envious of him. <laughs> And they tried to sabotage his movement in many ways. But because purity is the force, <laughs> all of their plans to sabotage Prabhupada's preachings were a failure. Because light is more powerful than darkness. <laughs> If one is envious, I mean he's living in the realm of darkness. One who selflessly, humbly presents the truth, he is living in the realm of light. Sometimes we think that darkness can defeat the light. But that's not true. Just consider this example. You go into a completely dark cave. And you take your you take your little flashlight, you know, and you turn it on. <laughs> and what happens to the, the all of a sudden there's so much light in that cave, you see. Just even a, even if you just strike a match, 
It creates a huge light within that cave. <laughs> it destroys so many cubic feet of darkness. <laughs> Now try the opposite. Take a can full of darkness and go out into the bright summer day <coughs> and take the lid off that can to spread darkness. How much darkness will you spread? Dark darkness will be completely wiped out within a second. Is it? So the fact is that light destroys darkness and darkness cannot destroy light. So sometimes people speak untruth to try to defeat those who are speaking truth. But in the end, truth always wins over untruth. So we should simply stick to the pure teachings of Srila Prabhupada. Faithfully stick to his teachings, humbly serving him with no cross pride, no uh, egotism, just humbly go on serving Srila Prabhupada. Without any personal desires for profit, adoration and distinction. Simply purely desiring to push forward his mission. And then whatever obstacles may come, they will not be obstacles. They will be stepping stones. For one who is purely serving the mission of the Lord, there's no such thing as an obstacle. Because he sees how in every situation the loving, merciful hand of Krishna is operating. Therefore he's fearless. He has nothing personal to defend. He simply goes on preaching the truth. That's the... So this is what we saw in Srila Prabhupada, this quality of fearlessly preaching the truth. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada revealed to us in Atlanta the most amazing thing. He told us what, what he was thinking when he came to America. <laughs> His spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, had sent a sannyasi disciple to England to preach Krishna consciousness. Supporting him with rupees from India, and that was very expensive to do that. <laughs> Even if you look today, how much, how many rupees does it take to make one British pound? Uh, it must, it may be a hundred rupees. I'm not sure. I know it's about forty rupees for about a U.S. dollar, and a, a British pound is somewhere close, probably to a hundred rupees for one pound. So you can imagine how expensive it was, even uh, even then, to support a sannyasi in the UK with Indian rupees. <laughs> But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was so keen to establish Krishna consciousness in the Western world and he paid so many rupees to support that preaching in the Britain. <laughs> Actually, this sannyasi was not successful. But he did one time meet with a, a British lord. His name was Lord Zetland. And Lord Zetland, he had previously been the governor of Bengal. 
Bengal is in India. So he had been a governor in Bengal. He was a British lord. So he knew about the Indian system. Of, see, in the British culture, the lord is the highest rung. To be a lord is a very high rung in the British society, highest rung. And he knew that in India, being a Brahmin, that's the highest rung. So he was thinking, well, I'm a British lord now. If I can also be an Indian Brahmin, that'll be put another feather in my cap. So he asked this Prabhupada's god brother, he said, Swamiji, can you make me a Brahmin? And Prabhupada's god brother replied, yes, no problem. Simply, if you can give up illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication, and gambling, I can make you a Brahman, no problem. So, Lord Zetland immediately replied, impossible. <laughs> so, Prabhupada told us, when I came to your country, I was thinking, as soon as I tell you, no illicit sex, no meat eating, no intoxication, no game, you immediately say, Swamiji, go home. <laughs> but Prabhupada says, but still I thought, let me try. Mm-hmm. So Prabhupada actually thought he would be a failure. But he was prepared to speak the truth even if not one even one person accepted it. Prabhupada was not interested in some cheap followers. He simply wanted to present the truth and he prayed to Krishna that somehow the people would accept it. So we must always remember this mood of Srila Prabhupada. And we must always try to just simply present the truth to everybody. Will everyone take it? No. Will the highly intelligent people take it? Will the highly intelligent people take it? Yes. How many people buy the real diamonds? How many people buy real diamonds? And how many people buy costume jewelry? So in the international, in ISKCON, we are presenting, we are a diamond store, we are not a costume jewelry store. <laughs> Someone who wants cheap imitation spiritual life, they've come to ISKCON as the wrong place. But someone who is looking for genuine spiritual awakening, who wants to become an enlightened spiritual being, completely liberated from all miseries of material existence, solidly situated in transcendental knowledge and realization, if that's you, you've come to the right place. And we welcome you home. We welcome you home. Actually, we're all a big spiritual family. In the whole world, all living beings, we are all one spiritual family. And Krishna, our God, is our Father. So we are all brothers and sisters, we are all family members. So why are we not together? Why are we fighting? Why are we murdering each other? Why are we making terrorist attack? You see, all of these things, we're completely ignorant of how we're all one spiritual family. 
So Krishna consciousness means to rejoin that spiritual family. To give up enmity. To give up jealousy. To give up these negative qualities of the heart. And to become saintly. And that is Krishna consciousness. So I'm very happy that you all have participated in our wonderful Ratha Yatra festival today. And if you can't wait for a whole year for Ratha Yatra to come back, and if it's so happy you just can't wait a whole another year, then I have good news for you. And day after tomorrow, we're having another Ratha Yatra in Sliven. <laughs> Come and sing and dance with us in Sliven. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and if you'll join our Krishna Ganya's movement, you can sing and dance every day. Sing and dance your way back to Gata. That is our motto. And when you get started of singing and dancing, and then you can feast. And if you're tired of singing, dancing and feasting, then you can take a nap. And when you wake up, you're going to again sing and dance and feast. So in this way, we invite you all to join this, the most wonderful party in the whole world, you see. Everybody likes to party. New Year's party, birthday party, this party, that party. Everybody likes to party. But the Hare Krishna people, they are the best partiers in the whole world. We party 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It is called Lord Chaitanya's and Kirtan Party. So we invite you to join the Lord Chaitanya's and Kirtan Party. We party all the time. Even the devotee when he's washing the dishes. I mean, who likes to wash dishes? You know, nobody likes to wash dishes. But when a devotee washed this, he's going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. He's happy washing the dishes even, you see. Even cleaning the toilet, he's happy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. You see. So, if you want to be happy, then chant Hare Krishna. That's all you have to do to join our party. So everybody repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. So now you're part of the party. Just, just keep chanting and you can be partying with this forever, you see. Our party is so amazing. And that even when we leave our bodies, we're going to go on partying. You see, for a Hare Krishna person, death is nothing. Just like when the NASA shoots the rockets in the outer space, it is the certain stage they drop off the big booster rocket, you know. And then a smaller rocket kicks in and travels in outer space, you see. So in Krishna consciousness, we teach you how to use your body as a booster rocket. To catapult yourself beyond the material existence. And after this one, then there's, an, there's another booster rocket, that's called the subtle body. We teach you how to Ignite that one also properly. <laughs> and how to drop that one off and go on in your, in your spiritual body. <laughs> You've heard of astral travel? 
We teach you a type of travel which is much more advanced than astral travel. Because astral travel you can only do within the material existence. We teach you spiritual body travel. And we give you an airplane to fly on. It's a subtle airplane. It's called Mantra Vimana. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you meditate on this mantra, it will serve as a vimana or airplane to take you into the transcendental existence. Has Bulgaria been getting you down lately? Chant Hare Krishna. Enter the wonderful spiritual world right now. You don't have to stay in this material world another minute. Simply chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And you can feel how you're being lifted in the transcendental existence. But you have to chant with love. You have to have faith in the name. And if you do, that name will carry you back to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. To become his eternal associate in his transcendental pastimes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So now I can ask if there's any questions. Uh, this lady, she has introduced herself and she said that uh, she would like to stay with us and she likes us and maybe she, she, will, she will join us. That's what she said. Oh, that's very nice. Where, where do you live here in Burgas? So our leader here in Burgas, will you stand up? This is our leader here in Burgas. He, he can engage you. So you may contact, you give him your contact information. He's, our, he's the leader of our movement here in Burgas. Yeah. So you may contact with him and he'll engage you in Krishna's service. Thank you very much. Bhagodariya. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, why sometimes we see that darkness defeats light? Why is <clears throat> Bhaktivinoda Kaur said that sometimes darkness defeats light, but it's only temporarily. Actually, that's a symptom of the age of Kali. In the age of Kali, darkness gets the upper hand over light. <clears throat> But Lord Chaitanya has come to dissipate the darkness of ignorance. There are very nice shloka in this connection in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Godriye Pushpapancho Chitra Chandra Tamo Nudo I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Shri Krishna Chaitanya and Prabhu Nityananda. They have appeared on the eastern horizon of Gauda just to dissipate the deep 
dark, dense ignorance of the sage of Kali. So, when darkness attacks, simply we have to take shelter of Shishi Gornitai. And they will protect us. That's a fact. They have come to defeat the darkness. So if we take shelter of them, then we'll, then we'll always be victorious in the struggle of darkness versus light. Anything? Yes. Uh, in the first shloka of Shikshashtaka, he said that the, the chanting of the Hare Krishna cleanses the heart from the dust accumulated for many lifetimes. And also it is said that uh, those who chant Hare Krishna should avoid uh, thinking that uh, this chanting is some kind of ritualistic uh, pious activity. Mm -hmm. So can you please explain how one should chant this <coughs> mantra? The idea is that you should not chant for some material purpose. I want to get a job, so I'm going to chant to get a job. I bought a lottery ticket, so I'm going to chant so I can win the lottery. In other words, do not chant for fulfilling any material desire. That's the meaning. But if, if you chant for your, the purification of your heart, that is not some ritualistic thing. That is the actual purpose of the chanting. You see, you actually are a pure devotee of Krishna. But you're covered by material qualities right now. So the more you chant, that cleanses away the dirt of material qualities from your heart. It's a cleansing process. It's not praying for some material desire, but you're chanting to cleanse your heart. So you should chant as much as possible, 24 hours a day. At least 16 rounds, at least. That means you don't have to stop at 16. Some devotees chant extra rounds every day because they know their hearts are very dirty. So they want to clean and clean and clean their heart more and more and more. Any other questions? How, how can we overcome envy to other devotees? How do we become free of envy towards other devotees? It is very easy then. You simply have to see their wonderful qualities. Because all of us, you know, we have our good qualities and our bad qualities, combination. It's like I have my good qualities, my bad qualities, you have your good qualities and bad qualities. You see? <laughs> so instead of looking for the bad in others, which is when we look for bad in others, that's envy. You should look for the good in the others. And this is very practical. I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody plays Madranga drum really expertly. I mean, the, the people are just in awe when the, the people play the madanga, you see. So let's say you're really envious, you think, yeah, but he's really, he must be really puffed up. That's envy, you see. So if you're envious of that person's expert madanga player playing, will Krishna ever let you become an expert madanga player? No, Krishna will never, because you're envious of someone else's expertise, Krishna will never give you expertise in Mananga. 
But if you appreciate his Madanga playing, oh, just see how he's expressing his love for Krishna, his dedication to Prabhupada's movement by this, playing the drum with such devotion. If you appreciate his Madanga playing, what will happen when you play a Madanga? When you pick up Madanga, what will happen? Krishna will empower you because you're appreciating that devotee's Madanga playing. He'll empower you to play very nicely Madanga. So if you want to be envious of other devotees, you can do that. <laughs> but you won't have any empowerment <laughs> for doing things nicely in Krishna's service. For those who appreciate each and every devotee, how he is using his talents in Krishna's service. Just like yesterday, I had a meeting with Param Jyoti Prabhu. And I was appreciating how he's, as a businessman, he, he's learned how to operate as a businessman very successfully, you see. And I was commenting to him in this meeting that it's very nice how you're using this. I see how you're using this skill in Krishna's service for uh, as your service on the Brahminical Council of our movement here in Bulgaria. I was appreciating him very much to see how he's very expertly using his skills he's developed in the service of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So in this way, the more we can appreciate the Vaishnavas, you see. does that mean you have to agree with them on, on every issue? No, I may disagree with you. You may think, well, today the, de the deities should be dressed in a green outfit. And I'm thinking, no, today should be blue. See? We may disagree. Green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. So we're going to have a fight in the Bajari room over green and blue? It doesn't make any sense. We both want to serve Krishna. So we may disagree how to serve Krishna. But we have to see we are both wanting to serve Krishna. So Prabhupada said, even if there is difference of opinion between devotees, that difference of opinion is spiritual because they both want to serve Krishna. So we should never be envious or critical or negative towards another devotee just because they don't agree with us. You see. I mean, after all, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> There's one disease called PD disease. <clears throat> Pure devotee disease. Yes, I'm thinking I'm a, you know, big, big advanced Paramahamsa. I can't make any mistakes because I am Paramahamsa. <laughs> <laughs> so don't have a Paramahamsa complex uh, thinking you're a big, big liberated soul who can't make any mistakes, you know. Better to always be humble and think, yes, it's only if somehow I'm, you know, I'm just an, an ocean of mistakes, but somehow I'm a honey, I'm a honey, what is that, a, a beehive. My heart is simply a beehive of mistakes and and illusions, but somehow Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj has saved me from this. So I think we'll stop here, and I, and I know everybody's a little tired from, maybe there's, we have a nice book table back there. We encourage everybody to, who hasn't gotten our books yet, please get a book, because the wonderful experience you had today you, uh, that you can keep it because the, all, everything you experienced, all the ecstasy, the nectar you've tasted, it's all compressed into those books over there. So you take a book home, you're going to have a Ratha Yatra festival at every minute in your house, just by the presence of that book. 
the unlimited Advaita Yatra festival is going on right inside those books. So take a book home today, and any time you want to get back into the Advaita Yatra, just open the book and start reading. Immediately you'll be back in the festival. Okay? So I thank you very much. Blago Dadia. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.